What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new, my name is Brad Sherman and on this channel we explore tips, strategies, and experiences that I have had that will help you start and scale your Amazon FBA wholesale business. In this video, we are going to be discussing profit margin. I have my whiteboard behind me. We are going to dive deep into some great content on wholesale. I'm really excited to share this video with you guys because I've gotten some questions about margins and let's be honest, everyone likes to throw out their sales revenue numbers, but in the industry, profit margin is not talked about a whole lot and I want to address this for you guys to help you understand that it is possible to make money on Amazon in the wholesale business model in 2020. Before we get into it, I am very excited to announce that I am going to be doing a giveaway once I reach 100 subscribers. I'm going to be giving away a free 30 minute consultation phone call for any questions you might have about growing or starting your Amazon FBA wholesale business. Anyone who is a subscriber is eligible for this. Once I reach 100 subscribers, I will be doing the announcement for who will be receiving this free phone call. So make sure you guys smash that subscribe button if you want to be eligible for this free phone call. Without further ado, let's jump right into the video. So in this video, guys, we are going to discuss profit margin. I'd like to start the video by explaining the difference between sales and profit. And why is everyone posting their revenue numbers but not their profit numbers? Well for one reason, and that's your sales numbers may be a lot larger than your profit numbers. And there's nothing wrong with tracking your growth based on sales, and there's nothing wrong with feeling accomplished that you've reached a sales goal, but you guys have to make sure that your accounting is done properly so that you are deriving a profit margin that is suitable and scalable for your business. And I want to go over what my profit margin is. If you guys recall in the year of 2019, my business ran almost entirely on retail arbitrage. I did have a couple wholesale accounts, but they didn't generate me as much revenue in proportion to my retail arbitrage sales. My best month of sales in 2019 was December. My net sales revenue was right around $30,000. The profit margin that my business made off of this was 20%. Currently, I've scaled my business up to right around $80,000 in monthly sales and my profit margin has since gone down to 14.5%. Why has this happened? In the beginning of 2020, I started adding wholesale accounts to my inventory and what has happened is my business has transitioned almost entirely into the wholesale model. In wholesale, the overall margin is a lot lower than an arbitrage business model. Wholesale, you're looking at a rough profit margin of on average, I would say about 15%. A goal profit margin as a business in general is 20%. However, in the retail arbitrage business model or online arbitrage when selling on Amazon, I have heard people do 30, even 40%. It's not uncommon to reach these profit margin levels. That's because you are buying inventory that not everyone has, almost like you are hunting for inventory and you can flip these products for a very high profit margin. Now here is the key difference between obtaining that high profit margin in arbitrage and the lower profit margin in wholesale. And that is wholesale can be scaled at a much quicker rate than retail arbitrage can. And this simply comes down to, with wholesale, you are building out a stream of multiple accounts. They are replenishable products that once you have put in that upfront work for, you virtually have to do minimal work once you have the wholesale account. Personally, I would much rather make a 14.5% margin off of a higher sales revenue, leaving my net profit a lot higher than it would be to put in hours and hours of work in stores, scanning products, packing, prepping. This is the key difference in my business between 2019 and 2020. And that is in 2019, when the business ran mainly on retail arbitrage, I was putting in a lot of work 
inside of the business. Now in 2020, I work more on my business as a whole. If you are going to start an Amazon business in 2020, it's very important to determine your business model and your goals. Like I said, with retail arbitrage, I was very much working inside of my business and it was requiring a ton of my time. With wholesale, I'm able to call 10 to 20 companies and close a certain amount of accounts per week that add products to my inventory and I can now take my time that I was using scanning in stores or prepping product or polybagging or labeling and I can now take the time that I was, was using for that, use it to gain more wholesale accounts and work on my business on an overall scale. And this is what scaling a business is about. It's about taking your time and reallocating it to the most important things in your business. How is this done? You can hire employees, you can hire VAs, you can use software tools that help make your processes much more efficient. You can build out and scale up your business with these tools. As you grow as a business, your profit margin is likely going to go down because your velocity is going up. This is what I have explained in some other videos in that when you're just starting out, you're not doing as much volume and you therefore need to take a higher margin and a higher return on investment. Let's dive into the whiteboard. I'm going to go through an example of a product with you and I think this is gonna help you guys out a lot. We're going to go through an example that I've provided for you guys. Product A is going to sell at $30. Amazon takes 30 to 33%. We'll say they take $9.90 off of your sales. This leaves you with a revenue of $20.10. This is the amount that Amazon pays out to you. Let's say you sold one unit in a two week period. As we know, Amazon pays us every two weeks. So we sell one unit in a two week period. This is the amount that Amazon is going to pay us barring any returns or refunds or the reserve level that they need to keep in the account. We then take off our buy cost, which is our cost of goods sold. We paid $12.50 per unit, leaving us with a net profit of $7.60. How does this compare to our sales? So $7.60 divided by our gross sales revenue of $30 yields us with a gross profit margin of 25%. This is our gross margin, not our net margin, because it excludes any returns, refunds, advertising expenses, or any other itemized expenses that are on your income statement. Guys, there are great software tools out there. Personally, I use Inventory Lab to help me see my itemized income statement. We then have our return on investment. This is our $7.60 profit divided by our cost of goods sold. So let's jump down here and run through a hypothetical. We paid $12.50 per unit. We bought 100 units, leaving us with a total buy cost to the supplier of $1,250. In month one, let's say we sold 50 units. And guys, this is oversimplified. I just want to help you gain the overall picture of how we can deduct our profit margin. So in month one, we sold 50 units at a $7.60 profit. This is our profit per sale, leaving us with $380 monthly net. In month two, we sold another 50 units. So we sold through our inventory in two months times our net profit, leaving us with $380. The combination of these two numbers after two months yields us a net profit of $760. After two months with this wholesale product, it has generated us $760. Now, what do we do with this amount? So we can take the 760 and we can put it back into the business meaning we can pay off our supplier and then take our profits and reinvest the earnings into another product. Or we can take, take it and put it in our pocket. So if we did that, we wouldn't have any more business retained earnings to reinvest. Look at this option as a company paying out dividends to its stockholders. If the company were to pay out over 100% in dividends, it's not keeping any money as retained earnings that go back into the business. The amount of money that a company has in retained earnings is a growth signal. Or we can split it down the middle, maybe take a little bit in our pocket 
and put a little bit back into the business. So how we do this is all going to be based on your goals and how you want to grow as a business and how fast you want to grow as a business. Let's jump back over here. We have cost of goods sold. So we can now almost break down some of our other expenses, which can take place in the form of variable costs or fixed costs. Maybe so there's some other things that go into this product. That's why this is our gross profit, not our net profit. So it's important to do these calculations after you have taken care of all of your variable costs. Maybe we have a prep center that preps our items on a per unit basis. This is going to be a variable cost. The amount of money that you pay a prep center to prep your units is going to be charged off of each unit. Maybe the company charges you shipping to ship to your location if they're not shipping direct to Amazon. We can divide that total shipping cost by the number of units that our shipment contains to derive our per unit shipping cost. As far as fixed costs, maybe we have more in-house overhead. So if you guys prep your product in-house, then you're going to have supplies, maybe you have employees. These are expenses that are considered overhead expenses. So guys, it's absolutely critical that you're tracking your net profit margin month after month and not just your sales revenue. And I do recommend using a software to do this. Like I said to you, my overall profit margin has gone down five and a half percent since I've transitioned over to the wholesale model. However, my net dollar amount in profit is larger than it was in 2019 when I was taking a 20% profit because I'm doing much more velocity now and I have constant replenishable wholesale products as opposed to constantly searching and running around to stores, scanning products and always being on the hunt for inventory. One more thing I wanna to touch on is Amazon pays us out on a bi-weekly basis. It's important to realize guys that Amazon keeps a certain amount of money in your account that they hold on to for any returns, refunds. This is an amount that is out of your control and Amazon is going to keep this amount withheld from your payment. This is not something that you can get around, so it makes cash flow in this business a little bit difficult. Let's touch on that for a moment. Let's touch on cash flow. So if Amazon's withholding, you know, maybe they're withholding half of your funds from your two week period. And in wholesale, you have to place your order upfront with your supplier, account for lead time with shipping to them. Maybe they're on back order. So you may have to place your order an entire month in advance to accommodate for lead time. That does make it difficult to pay your supplier right away when you might not have the adequate funds in your bank account because Amazon does withhold money from your payment period. Let's break this down then. You have several options for capital. You can choose to scale your business through debt or you can only use your retained earnings that your profit generates. So you profit on every sale. You sell through all of your inventory and you have your net profit in your bank account once Amazon pays you out in full. Now what you can do is you take that money and you reinvest it in another product. We said that this product here was going to sell through in two months. Maybe you have a product that sells through in four months or three months. So growing through this way is going to take some time. And I'm not recommending either way. It all depends on how fast you want to grow as a business. With debt, you can maybe use credit cards or some other form of debt to leverage capital for your business. I am going to cover debt and reinvesting your profits in your business in another video. We'll cover different types of options that you have for scaling your business and leveraging capital. So that's it for this video, guys. I did want to cover my profit margin because I wanna be completely transparent with you. And I know a lot of people are throwing up screenshots of their sales revenue. And I wanted to give you guys an honest perspective of what a net profit margin can look like in an Amazon FBA wholesale business giving you an example of my profit margin and the example on the whiteboard that we went through. So I hope this video helped you guys understand more about profit margin. As I said earlier in the video, 
Once I hit 100 subscribers, I will be giving away a free phone call. If you are a subscriber, you are eligible for this free phone call. 30 minute call, I'm super pumped to announce this guys. So make sure you guys smash that subscribe button so you can be eligible for the free phone call. Once we hit 100 subs, I will be making the announcement. If you enjoyed this video, smash that like button. If you guys have any questions or concerns, drop a comment down below. Thank you guys for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you next time.